I started making gunpowder rum about four years ago, I guess, and I mostly made it for myself um, and also the bar in which I was working, which was a cocktail bar in New Zealand. And after about four years of making cocktails with it, uh, various people told me that they liked it enough that they'd like a bottle for themselves. And so I started making more and more of it um, to fill that demand, as it was. It's very much a handmade sort of process in which I do everything. Um, I blend the rums, bottle it, and then distribute it as well. Uh, the packaging is my own design. The, the rum I make is, is not something I make from scratch. Um, I don't own the means of production, as Karl Marx would have it. Um, but I do blend certain flavors together. It's a blend mostly of Caribbean rums, uh, including most styles quite a lot of licorice and sort of molasses type flavour, uh, which is quite fitting for something made from molasses. I guess my rum links to the 400 year tradition of rum in that it's an attempt to recreate a style of rum that hasn't existed perhaps for maybe 100 years, maybe 150 years. There was a long tradition in the Caribbean and also um, the Americas of adding certain things to rum in order to give it more intensity um, but also a certain amount of weight and body and spiciness as well things such as chilies or tobacco and even gunpowder which is a particular angle that I've taken uh, one of the things I like about rum is that it's such a loose category it, that you can blend and create from all sorts of different sources um, what you're making must be made from sugarcane or its byproducts as you can make from straight molasses or you can make from fibers and the, and the juice of the sugar cane. Another thing that I produce is something called cherry rum which is the gunpowder rum recipe pretty much word for word um, but it introduces central Otago cherries which are perhaps some of the finest cherries in the world, um, which they don't tend to export because cherries don't travel very well. The central Otago in New Zealand, which is sort of quite far down south, is famous uh, partly for its cherries, but mostly for its Pinot Noir, which they produce, uh, which is exported worldwide and wins gold medals everywhere. So and the cherries that it produces as well are excellent. And when you combine them with the rum, uh, it makes a particularly special sort of cherry flavoured alcohol. Uh, I only make this once a year just because that's when the cherries are in season and they're only in season for about three weeks and so I only make a limited amount but um, it's something that could be enjoyed for several months until it runs out. And cherries and rum is also a traditional um, North American cure for colds. It's from the 18th century. I'm looking at methods at the moment of increasing what I do um, while maintaining the authenticity. Um, sourcing rums from all over the world and then blending and distributing um, to such levels that hopefully a bottle of rum can be found in most um, cocktail bars of note around the world. Um, at the moment the, the rum itself is, is fairly hard for anyone outside of New Zealand to obtain. I mean one of the things people like is, is the the scarcity of it and also the, um, the roundabout manner in which it reaches most of the world. Um, being delivered in people's uh, carry-on luggage and planes and arriving in somewhere on the other side of the world is quite fun and, and has a story of itself. They can turn up to a bar with a bottle and it's quite an event. So I hope to be able to keep that kind of special element of having the rum appearing as a special event in itself. Uh, my name is Ben Simpson and I've created a rum brand called uh, Gunpowder Rum under the aegis of a company called the Smoke and Oakum Manufacturing. So I guess that makes it Smoke and Oakum's Gunpowder Rum, which is inspired by 400 years of rum consumption and production.